Warhammer 2 is not necessarily known for its efficiency of 1v1 duels or anything of the like, but it certainly was fast. If your lord or hero or anything got caught out for a marginal amount of time, it could take a ton of damage very quickly. This was one of the hallmarks of the series, a thing people really liked a lot, watching Torox duel up against Colex Sun Eater, or Archeon duel Torox, or Marathi duel Torox, or Stone Trolls duel Torox, or anything duel Torox. Alright, Tor Torox is not a great example, he was a little bit busted, but... This fight took all of... Oop, Tyrion got his heal. I guess it'll take a little bit longer. Fast forwarding, the fight is a little bit cleaner, better executed, quicker, and more decisive, I think. Possibly. Actually, don't know who's gonna win here. Quake! My boy! My boy! My boy! Aw, oh, dick! Alright. So, he lost, but it was pretty fast. So in Warhammer 3, you get gigantic demons to fight each other. It is hard to find foot characters. I'll admit that much is already different, but there's other differences too, and I'm sure you felt them. I'm not really interested in pertaining the conversation of, oh, well, Warhammer 3 isn't actually that much longer because of X and X reason, or if you throw a Shugi Lord against an exalted great unclean one, the Shugi Lord will die rather quickly. Well, that's not the lived game experience of a lot of people. A lot of people have noticed that the games take longer. Whether it's land battles or domination battles, the game just feels slower overall, less action-packed per se. And, uh, yeah, that can't really be denied. Blobs are especially powerful because of how long it takes to kill anything. And fights can seem to take forever. As one of my recent videos noted, it was, I believe, Exalted Bloodthirster doing his best. I had an Exalted Bloodthirster cycle-charging war compasses and other pretty shitty little devices, and he couldn't get a lot of damage out. Well... We'll go into the details a little bit more later, but frankly, it's just due to ultra unit size, but Warhammer 3 made sure that you can't go back to large and fix anything. In fact, you can't fix anything at all, no matter what you do. The base point is that the weapon strength percentage, 559, sounds impressive until you realize that the guy he's fighting has a health pool of over 12,000, meaning he would have to get 24 consecutive hits in a row with no healing being applied to this Exalted Greater Unclean One for him to win this fight which he didn't, but it took a very long time to do so. A very long time. That was on Triple Fast Forward and we were just here forever. This can make games slow down as people wander around blobs, get healing support, escape from a bad situation. It's just much quicker to realize that you are in a bad area and you need to move. Is this necessarily a bad thing for the player? Eh, no, that one's up to debate, but I think we can all agree that a slower game is worse for audiences. So what's going on? Well, the data will come in a second, but for now we just need to talk about the basic state of the game. Looking at the, looking at the factions, there's not as many duelists. Cathay usually goes with the Dragon Blood Shugan and Lords, so they usually want to run away from a fight. Corn has great duelists, but has difficulties with the capitalizing on that. Kilzev likes to blob up with healing from their patriarchs or debuff spells from their ice witches or slows or any of those things so kislev just tanks through with their duelists kithay either doesn't take a duelist or takes a duelist that has self-healing corn tries his best to be honorable but he won't get it nurgle doesn't have any great duelists but they will stand and fight with abundance of healing like we just saw the exalted great unclean one beat scarbrand's ass so nurgle has healing ogre kingdoms get out of my face Ogre Kingdoms don't really ever take Grease's Gold Tooth. He's kind of a meme, so they'll take supportive lords, and if they get into trouble, they will cast Troll Guts on themselves, healing, or Butcher, the army ability, healing. Some of their duelists are Stonehorns, but they are, again, supported by Troll Guts, so healing. Slash, again, kind of like Corn wants to take the fight honorably, but lack of healing and horrible, horrible melee stats that we've covered in other videos make them terrible, terrible duelists. And even, I mean, if you want to get technical, technically they have some passive healing if they're near some other stuff. But for the, technically they have healing. But for the, the sake of this video, we're not going to talk about that. And Zinch has absurdly powerful duelist lords, as also covered in other videos, mostly due to their janky models and overbalancing of their spell utility, helping them in melee combat. Their lords aren't punished for how good they are in melee combat with cost increases or anything. Or you can be Kairos and have ridiculous healing. Two factions don't have ridiculous healing. And again, Slanesh, we said they kind of do, but we're going to ignore it. But most of their lords have some form of healing. Anyway, one faction pretty much doesn't have healing. Huh, healing might make fights take longer. So that's point one in the state of the game. Point two is the lack of spell punishments. Cthay has final transmutation. 
to punish blobs or single entities. But final transportation did take a nerf. And you will notice if I turn the unit scale to large, this will come into more effect later. If I change the unit scale to large, the numbers go down 59 to 100 maximum damage per second for a duration of eight seconds versus the ultra, which is the default. 67 to 133. So no matter what you do, the numbers scale with the health pools you have. So changing from ultra to large will not change the rough amount spells do. For other single entity targeting spells, Korn has none. Kislev has Death Frost, which is horrifically inefficient as far as Winds of Magic usage goes. For 14 Winds of Magic, you can get 67 damage per second if you were lucky uh, for 20 seconds, which generally is not worth it in most people's minds. Nurgle has Rancid Visitations, largely with the same problem, also because Stream of Corruption. and There are, there are other better spells available, I guess is the point I'm trying to make, but Nurgle does have Spirit Leech, which is okay. Honestly, on testing it recently, it's still okay. And Rancid Visitations, which is fine, but way overpriced, um, Winds of Magic-wise. Is it actually just 2 to 1? 67 to 133. Yeah, I think it is 2 to 1 Spirit Leech, but it just feels, feels really overpriced. Ogre Kingdoms don't have any single entity targeting spells except for Fireball, which is okay, but most single entities in game three are uh, heavily armored. Slamash doesn't have any good single target ones. Not really. Between Shadow and Slamash, not really any good ones there. And Zinch infamously is actually great at taking out single entities with Blue Fire, among other things. So good for you, Zinch. You're the winner in this. So the state of the game itself. And I hope you're not too bored by it, because we're going to get into numbers! Everybody loves numbers! The state of the game itself increased healing, decreased single entity punishment in spells. But that can't be it, right? There's certain matchups that just feel like they take longer. Well, they do, and it's not getting any better anytime soon. Come with me to Land of Math! So I have an Excel spreadsheet. I went back into game two, so how the data works very quickly is game two and game three, unit size large or ultra in both games. And then I took Kolek, who is a monstrous lord. I took Krokgar, who is a foot duelist. Uh, I took Queek as another foot duelist, more in the anti-infantry category. I took Balthazar Gelt as a foot mage. Compared him in both games with his stats available in the spell tracker that you can flip back and forth between units and such. I also took three infantry units, two of which are, uh, well, two infantry units, sorry. One from the Skaven, one from the Chaos and Dragon Princes for a little bit of cavalry perspective. This is by no means all-inclusive, but this is the data I did take, and these are some notes I made about it. Oh, God, where to start? All right, first and foremost. Nah, fuck that. We're going up to the, the Lords. So, Kolek in Game 2. His weapon strength is the same no matter what you do. In just Game 2, just looking at what I have highlighted, his weapon strength is the same no matter what you do. Ultra unit size only increases his health pool. You can see hits to die is, is if Kolek was smacking himself, how long would it take him to die? It would take 12 hits if you round up in a normal game that we're all used to. It would take 16 on Ultra mode, okay? That is a third more hits. You need a third more hits for Kolek to kill himself. Great. Then you flip to Game 3. On both unit sizes, because game three added a new thing where you, if you decrease or increase the unit scale, and you'll notice this is consistent throughout the spreadsheet, if you decrease the unit scale, you also, for some reason, decrease the weapon strength. Now, this could potentially be a smart thing in that sometimes on for fun tournaments in Warhammer 2, um, if you went to small unit size, single entities prevailed because their weapon strength was now like, if you hit someone, you did half their HP, right? But the problem is, is if game three is not in a healthy state and duels are taking too long, no matter what you do with the size, much like my complaints about siege battles, you don't have full control over what's going on. So you're stuck with the game mode they gave you and hope that it's good. And here you can see that Kolek would take longer to kill himself in game three, no matter what size you're on, than either of the times in game two. There's a specific to Kolek, but I'll get back to him. So Kolek's longest kill times are in game three, no matter what mode. You will see that all other lords I pulled, their longest death timers are in game three, no matter what mode. The game two, large, which we're all used to playing on, is always the shortest death timer. So yes, it is just 
mathematically, statistically, factual. Lords are taking way longer to die in game three. Roughly a third is a third longer is, is what I found across the board. Uh, I have some color-coded notes, but I'll just finish up what I'm talking about before I get back to those. The interesting thing is that this only applies to single entities. Uh, the large unit size of multi-entity models stays the same. You can see 26 weapon strength for clan rats no matter what, 48 for chosen no matter what, 44 for dragon princes no matter what. Only single entities are affected by changing the unit size as far as their weapon strength goes. Aside from that, HP pools for game one, and, uh, sorry, game two and game three are the same no matter when you're on uh, ultra. It's ten forty eight for both chosen, and it's you know nine thousand six hundred for both clan rats. And large is the same as well. Interesting discrepancy is that dragon princes, and I haven't checked all the other calf units, but I think I checked empire knights, and it was similar. Um, they all all the cavalry has slightly more health on both fund levels than they did in the previous game so that makes cav a little tankier interestingly enough but yeah so what notes did i have to make sure i wanted to say foot lords all had the same hp between large and large and ultra and ultra except for kolak had a mild buff don't know why that was but it was just interesting to me all lord death times were made to match warhammer 2 ultra no matter what yes so the longest death time in warhammer 2 ultra was always made to match so no matter what you do in game three, slow. Only change large size gets nerfed by 33% in their damage category, which tracks. Because you could see, in case I didn't make that clear, game three and game two, the characters have the same amount of health except for Kolak, but like Queek has 3,216, 3,216, it's just that large in Warhammer 2, you get full damage at 420, nice. And in Warhammer 3, you get a nerfed 315, or you can get your damage value back on Ultra, but he also gets more health. Large size would speed up the game, because as I noted in blue here, the death times of the Clan Rats and the Chosen are exactly the same in Game 2 versus Game 3. Like, depending on what size you're on, it's going to take 163.75's attacks from a Chosen on a Chosen to kill a Chosen in both games, or it takes 218 in both games. So us, the entire community going back to large size would actually speed up games because the multi-entity models would die faster uh, and much closer to game two, but the single entities would still die very slowly. Um, yes, okay. So the note I wanted in the light, lighter-ish blue was just that all games are roughly taking as long as Ultra Mode would on Warhammer 2, and not what we're used to. And then a mild cav buff. Yay, mild, mild cav buff, woo! I wrote here spell scale too, but I talked about that previously. Because uh, I didn't, when I was making the spreadsheet, I did not know how the video was gonna turn out. So, that leaves us with a lot to summarize here. So, I'm actually just gonna count along. Uh, we have way more healing in game three than game two in that all but one of the factions has significant single entity healing. And in game two, let's see, Beastmen did not, Dark Elves did not, Dwarves did not, Empire did. Tomb Kings didn't have significant healing, but they had some. Yeah, they didn't have significant healing. Never mind, fuck that. Uh, Tomb Kings did not. Skaven did not, like Throt, you might be thinking like, well, Throt exists, Throt wasn't taken that much. And even when he did, Skaven got burst out so quickly, his healing didn't usually matter that much. Yeah, Throt was not a significant portion of the meta. Um, High Elves do, what Elves do? Warriors of Chaos did not. Coast and Counts do have a decent amount of healing. So, like, you can see that it's about 50-50 as I'm going through this list in my head. Norska did not. So it's like, all right. So point one, way more healing. Way more healing. Point two, larger health pools. Decreasing damage. Decreasing if you go back to large scale or the same if you're at ultra. You know what I mean? But still. Uh, so those are kind of two for one point. Three single entity spell nerfs 
slash not in game yet. Is that about it? I would think so. Yeah. So between those three things, it's not actually a surprise that Lord duels aren't as epic or as quick. You know, that's it's a pretty big freaking deal. It takes forever to do your damage, and then when you do do it, it just gets healed up, and you're like, great, great. Oh, healing's also increased. Oh, God. Healing was buffed by percentage. That's another thing. It's the healing is stronger and better and quicker. Hooray, much more things get healing capped than they ever did in game two. So, yeah. Yeah, you are not hallucinating. You're not, you're not um, rose-tinted glasses remembering Warhammer 2. There are four reasons why single entity duels are taking forever. And single entities are so tanky, and blobs are so tanky, and everything's so tanky, and everything takes forever to die. It just is. Um, judging by the rough math on this, though, I would still hope that someday the multiplayer community can agree to go back to large size. I think it would make games quicker overall. As you can see, all the multi-entity models would die faster, even if the single entities wouldn't. Uh, that's all I got for you. If you like this video, subscribe. If you don't like this video, I guess I'm sorry. Hope you find the next one more entertaining. Goodbye. Rawr. Subscribe, yes, yes.